Hi there, it's Susie Iverson, otherwise known as Susie Q Scraps, and today I'm going to show you how you can fit your pictures inside various frames using the magic wand in Photoshop. For this tutorial, I'm using Photoshop Elements 9, but the steps are the same in earlier versions of Elements as well as in Photoshop CS. So I've already created a 12 by 12 scrapbook document at 300 dpi, and I've pulled into the document some pictures and frames that I want to use to show you how to do this. So the first step is to adjust your picture or transform it until it kind of looks the way you want it to inside the frame. And then we're going to work on getting rid of the pieces we don't want showing on our layout. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that and then zoom in so you can see what we're doing. So once you've adjusted your picture, you'll want to select the frame layer and now we're going to grab the magic wand tool. It looks like a little wand with a burst behind it. Or you can use the shortcut key W on your keyboard. Let me turn off the picture for just a second. What we're going to do is select all these transparent pixels that are inside the frame. That's one way we can frame a simple picture or we can choose to select all the transparent picture pixels outside the frame. Let's start with the outside version. It saves a step but I want you to be able to see both because we'll be using something similar on more complicated frames. So I'm going to go ahead and select all the transparent pixels outside my frame, making sure I'm selected on my frame layer. Now if you were to get super, super close, this selection line doesn't follow the frame exactly, and if we were just to delete the picture on the outside as it is, you would find that little bits of your picture are showing outside the frame. So what we're going to do is modify the selection, expand it a bit so that it's just inside the frame. So go to select, modify, expand. And then you just need a small number, 10 pixels is fine, just so that it's inside the frame and you won't have a chance of any bits of your picture hanging out outside. And then let me zoom out. Now you want to grab your photo layer and then hit delete on your keyboard and that deletes everything outside the frame and you can hit control D or go to select deselect to get rid of the marching ants. So that's the simple way to frame E with a simple frame. Let me go back a few steps in my undo history back to where I transformed my picture to look how I wanted it to in the frame. This time clicking on the frame layer we're going to select the transparent pixels inside. And again, there's going to be a bit of a gap between the picture and the frame, and so we want our picture to be tucked just under this frame. So we'll go to Select, Modify, Expand. Again, 10 pixels should be fine. Let me zoom in so you can see that now our selection is overlapping a bit. Now, if you hit Delete right now on your photo layer, you're going to delete the part you want to keep. So what you want to do is go to Select, Inverse, or hit shift Control i and now it's going to select everything outside the frame like we did just by clicking outside the frame. And select on your photo layer and hit delete. And again, control D to deselect to get rid of those marching ants. So now we have our picture and our frame together. And if you use control and click, you can select both layers. And if you want to link them so that when you go to grab them, you move both at the same time and don't end up with your picture shifted and showing stuff behind the frame. So that's a simple frame. Let's move on and look at a more complicated frame. All these frames are from my beep beep boop beep collection. Sounds like there's a work truck coming by so I hope you can still hear. So this frame's a bit more complicated. Let me zoom in and show you. Because we've got this little doodle hanging over one edge and the string, if we were to just select for example the wand tool outside, oops, make sure you're selected on the frame layer. It's not going to, you know, our picture's going to show up here when we hit delete. It's going to show up in these spaces. So that method's not going to work. Now, the other method I showed you for a simple when you click inside is going to be, let's again grab your frame layer, um, the best method for this kind of a frame. But again, as you can see, there's empty spaces where it's we need our picture to show through and it's not grabbing it. So your default setting um, has you just selected on this new selection. So every time you click it's going to do a new selection. But what we want to do is add to selection. 
that's what the second option is. And you'll notice your little wand gets a plus sign down in the bottom corner so you know that you have the add to selection so that when you click inside these loops, you're adding to all the pieces. So let's go ahead and go back. And first we're going to do the same first step we did with a simple frame and that's deciding where we, how we want our pictures to fit. So let's start with this big frame. I'm going to use this picture, just shrink it until it fits the way I kind of want it to look in this frame. And then double click to accept. And I'm going to turn off that photo so I can focus on this photo that I want in this small frame of the cluster. And again, resize and kind of fit. That's good enough. Okay, so if we turn on both of our pictures, we need to get rid of these pieces sticking outside. So again, you could select outside but then you got to make sure you grab all these little pieces and there's a lot more areas outside than inside the photo. So I'm going to turn off the smaller picture, make sure my frame layer is active. And I'm going to click inside this main spot and then I'm going to get in a little bit closer, making sure I have the add to selection option checked. And I'm going to start selecting on these other pieces, these smaller ones where I want the picture showing through. And I'll just follow the frame around in a circle to make sure I don't miss anything, including this tiny little gap right here. And it doesn't have to be perfect because when we expand the selection, we'll take care of the little imperfections. And we'll come around the rest of the frame and we've got all of it. So then we'll go to Select, Modify, Expand. 10 pixels should be fine. So now all these little gaps are going to show our picture, which is just what we want. Then click on picture layer, go to select, inverse, and then hit delete. So we delete everything outside of this selection. And then that picture is then nice, nice and perfect. So then we'll go to the smaller picture and we'll do the same thing. Make sure you're selecting the frame layer, then click inside, zoom in, and grab this extra piece that didn't get caught. And then we'll go to select, modify, expand, 10 pixels is fine. And then inverse, make sure your picture layer is active and hit delete. Now let me turn this other photo back on. You can see we framed both inside and all the little pieces of the picture are showing through all these little gaps. And then again, you can select all those layers and hit the link icon to link them. Okay, so that's all wonderful, but what if you want to use one of the pre-shadowed cluster flame frames? Let me just show you on this frame. We select inside and it's not grabbing where the shadow is. Obviously we want our picture to show up there. So we're going to work on the different settings you can change to grab those shadows. But first step is to get those photos to fit inside the frames. So these are the same pictures. Just a duplicate copy of them. I might rotate it a bit. That looks good. And then I'll turn that off so I can focus on this picture and again, make it smaller, rotate it, make sure it's inside all pieces of the frame. Okay, so let's focus on this big picture first. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off so I can really see what I'm doing with this shadow layer. So we grab the wand tool, oops, make sure your frame layer is active. And we're going to select the transparent pixels first. And we've told it to select contiguous, so it's only going to grab things that are touching. Now the tolerance is what tells Photoshop how close it needs to be to accurate. So if we say, well, let's start with the default and we click on this shadow, it's going to grab anything gray. It's grabbing these black lines that are then connected to this other frame and we're ending up selecting a whole bunch of stuff we don't want. So what we need to do is adjust that tolerance and because we've got black images right here, we're going to go ahead and turn that down to like 7. Now if you select inside that gray, it's going to go right up to the frame. We're going to follow all the edges around. It's come around this doodle, but it's not selecting the doodle anymore and spreading into the other frame. So you can see it's following all the edges. And now we need to do what we did on the last frame and grab these areas inside.
that are our little gaps that we want the picture to show through. You can zoom in and out so you can grab all the pieces. Like over here, we want to make sure we're showing through all these little bits. And again, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because when we expand this selection, we'll make sure we've got some overlap going on. And then in smaller areas, it really helps to zoom right in. And the shortcut for that is Control plus for in and Control minus for out. So now we've got everything it looks like, to me anyway. And then we're going to hit Select, Modify, Expand. 10 pixels should be fine. So now we're overlapping these edges and we should be good on everything that we want the frame to show on. So we'll turn our picture layer on and make sure it's active. We'll select the inverse so we delete everything outside and then hit delete. And then control D to deselect and you can see that your picture is fitting inside and showing through all these transparent spots. So let's repeat that on this second photo. And again, I think it's easier to see where the shadows are if you turn the picture layer off. Make sure your frame layer is active. Hit W for the wand. We're going to grab that transparent areas first, then grab the shadow areas. And then we'll zoom in closer to grab all the little gaps and pieces that might have been missed. So like these little springs even these little springs here. I'm just following the frame around. Um, you can hit spacebar, which will make your hand tool active so you can move around and then we want that spot too. And again, even this little gap, I'm zooming in, in and out to see all these different pieces and you'll get faster at it as you do it. But again, to get the hand, um, you hold spacebar and then drag your mouse to move around. And then when you take off the space bar, you'll get your magic wand back again. And you can click the different spots. And again, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You just want to get all the main areas and then we'll be expanding the frame. And this is my preferred method for framing frames. I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but this works for me. There we go. I think we got it all. So just zoom out and take a quick peek. Looks like we got everything. So we'll go to select, modify, expand, and turn that photo layer on and select it. And then we'll go to select inverse, hit delete, and then control D to deselect. And now we have both of our pictures framed in this beautiful cluster frame. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at suzyqscraps at gmail.com. Thanks.